speaker of the session, who is Monica Aldersburger from Munich, and uh, she will talk about non-ergodicity and emergent Hilbert space fragmentation in tilted Hubbard chains. Please. Okay. Thank you very much. So does that look good, the slides you see? it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to thank the, the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present our work, even though I cannot be there in person. And um, yeah, I would like to uh, speak about um, recent measurements that we did in tilted Fermi Hubbard chains. Uh, tilted lattices have been studied for a while, but now we are kind of looking at it from a different angle, looking at thermalization in these tilted lattice models. Uh, so just to very briefly set the stage, typically uh, we start by first laser pooling our atoms and produce a degenerate Fermi gas or a Bose-Einstein condensate, uh, which we then trap in standing waves of laser light. So we create these artificial crystals, which then can be described, or the dynamics of the atoms can then be described uh, by Hubbard models. So we can either study Bose or fermi hubbard dynamics, where J is the tunnel coupling between neighboring sites and U is the Hubbard on-site interaction energy strength. And in this talk, uh, we are actually working with fermionic potassium atoms, looking at dynamics in the Fermi-Hubbard model, and the 1D Fermi-Hubbard model in particular. Now, um, we consider these systems as very well isolated from the environment for many um, of, or for long evolution times. And we can nicely control the microscopic parameters and add additional potentials. And in particular, since these systems are isolated from the environment, we can look at quench dynamics in order to learn more about the um, thermalization properties of our quantum system. So the idea of these measurements is that we prepare um, a well-defined uh, initial state with high fidelity, which is here uh, denoted as psi naught, and then we look at the time evolution. So if we uh, think about thermalization in this isolated quantum system, there are two limits that are very well um, studied or very well known how the behavior looks like. Um, and of course, uh, many of you know much better than me, but um, there are ergodic systems uh, which thermalize. So there, if we look at a local observable that we can measure in our system, if, after long evolution times, this local observable essentially looks like a thermal ensemble. And then on the other hand, we have many body localized um, systems which can occur in the presence of disorder. So here the system uh, retains memory of its initial state. It does not thermalize, and this is due to an emergent extensive number of conserved quantities. Now, what we are interested in is looking at systems that fall in between these two categories. And this also ties in with the question if this order is really essential for seeing many body localized phases, or if there are maybe other systems that show um, many body localization phenomena, even in clean realizations without any disorder. And in particular, the system we have been interested in shows so-called so -called Hilbert space fragmentation. And the idea is that now, if we look at our um, quantum mechanical system, we can characterize it according to um, the conservation laws. So in particular, um, in our system, this is dipole conservation or center of mass conservation. And then you know that if you look at the whole structure of the many body Hilbert space, then it separates into disconnected subspace or symmetry sectors that are labeled um, according to the quantum numbers that are described by these conservation laws. But now there are very specific models um, where the local structure of one of these symmetry sectors fragments even further. And this is the phenomenon of Hilbert space fragmentation or Hilbert space scattering, shattering. So if you look at uh, the dynamics of specific initial states, then uh, since you have the shattering into uh, disconnected subspaces, the thermalization dynamics can look very different uh, depending on in which one of these fragments your initial state lives in. And uh, this phenomenon has been found in filtered uh, lattice models. So this phenomenon may give rise to localization even without the need of disorder. So let me briefly introduce the tilted Fermi Hubbard model. So it's the it's a 1D lattice model where we again have uh, hopping between neighboring sites and a Hubbard interaction energy strength U. But now on top of that, we have an energy difference, potential energy difference between neighboring sites, which is, is labeled as data. And this is very nice because um, in our experimental setups, it is relatively easy to implement uh, this type of tilted lattice model. Now, why did people look into this model in the first place? 
I think one of the motivations is that we know that in the non-interacting non limit, the system is so-called Vanier Stark localized. If we compute uh, the eigenstates of this tilted lattice model, we find Vanier Stark states. And here, um, these eigenstates, these j's are local um, Vanier orbitals on site j in, in the lattice. And these Bessel functions um, give the weight on neighboring uh, lattice sites in, in the model. Uh, what does it mean if we look at non-interacting dynamics? How can we see this localization? And there have been beautiful experiments um, over the years uh, that have studied block oscillation dynamics. Um, I'm just showing here one uh, which nicely resolves these dynamics in real space, which I took from the, the group of Markus Greiner here. Philip Price was the first author of this paper. And here you nicely see what the localization dynamics um, or how it shows up in these experiments. We start from an initially localized wave packet at the central site in the lattice. And then as you let time evolve, it, you see this nice breathing oscillations, but the particle will not explore the whole lattice as you would um, expect it to be the case in a homogeneous extended lattice model. So now we can define a localization length, which is essentially given by these Bloch oscillations. And the period of the Bloch oscillation is given by the strength of the tilt or the energy difference between neighboring sites. Okay, so now what happens if we include interactions? And the first papers that came out, the first theory works that came out uh, studying localization in this model in the presence of interaction basically worked in, in this regime. So I have here this 3D parameter space. This red line indicates the non-interacting limit, the Vanier Stark localization. And then we can turn on interactions, which are here uh, scaled by U over J. And um, these works considered relatively moderate interactions, U equal to J and uh, a small additional um, inhomogeneity or disorder just to get rid of uh, degeneracies in the many-body spectrum for the numerical computations. And indeed, in this limit, when we have small perturbations, it was found that localization can occur, and the signatures seemed very similar compared to conventional um, MBL systems. That's why also this is called Stark MBL system. But now, um, so this has been actually also studied in experiments, superconducting qubits and ions, and um, there has been one called atom experiment in 2D, where they have studied a 1D tilted lattice model coupled uh, to a free uh, perpendicular lattice direction. But now um, the question is what happens if we completely get rid of these inhomogeneities and uh, the small amount of disorder that was applied in the system. So basically we now look at this plane um, where delta delta is equal to zero, and we scan um, only the strength of the tilt, and we look at the strength of the Hubbard interaction energy. And it turns out um, that naively you may expect uh, this clean system to thermalize because you can always have uh, long range tunneling resonances between the tilt energy and the Hubbard interaction energy. Nonetheless, if you go to the limit of very strong tilts, you see uh, dipole conservation or center of mass uh, conservation. And in this limit, we can derive effective Hamiltonians. And it turns out that these effective Hamiltonians show emergent kinetic constraints that seem to give rise to Hilbert space fragmentation. So even if I label my quantum state according to the dipole moment of my initial state, there is an additional substructure of the system. So different initial states will not uh, relax in the same way, um, if, even if they have the same quantum numbers. And this is what we were interested in studying in our experiments. And I highlighted here several resonances just to ind indicate a few of these tunnel resonances that can occur. And indeed, we found that there are effective Hamiltonians um, for uh, many of these resonances and in this uh, violet reg region where delta is really the largest parameter in the system. Okay, how do we realize it? Um, our tilted lattice model uh, was realized with fermionic potassium atoms. Two different internal states are used in order to um, realize two different spin states. We work at T over TF on the order of 0.15. And the two spin states are two Zeeman sublevels with different MF quantum numbers here, minus nine, one, minus nine half and minus seven half. So there's a small difference in the tilt that we apply because we use a magnetic field gradient in order to do that. And then we can nicely tune the interaction energy using a Feshbach resonance between these two states, which is around 200 Gauss. The initial state that we use is this charge density wave. So we prepare a localized fermion on every other site and we do not control the spin ordering. So it's essentially an incoherent mixture of different spin configurations, but one uh, fermion localized on every even site. 
And then essentially we measure the amplitude of this charge density wave or imbalance as a function of time. And if the system thermalized, for a homogeneous system, we expected uh, this amplitude to decay to zero or this imbalance to decay to zero, such that the, the memory of the initial state is completely washed out. Now let's start benchmarking our system in the non-interacting case. Here you again see a numerical simulation of this block oscillation dynamics, where we look at an initially localized particle that then um, undergoes these block oscillations in the lattice. Now, looking at our imbalance observable or the amplitude of the charge density wave that we prepare, this would look like that. So we see coherent oscillations in the imbalance observable, where the characteristic frequency is given by the energy difference between neighboring sites by the block oscillation period. And then depending on the amplitude of the block oscillations, there's this additional uh, substructure within one period. We can compute that analytically, all is known. Uh, which makes it also very nice in order to benchmark our system in this non-interacting one year dark localized regime. And here you see uh, one of the time traces that we have taken for spin polarized Fermi gas at a relatively low value of the tilt of 1.2 J, where the amplitude of the block oscillations is about three sides, plus and minus three sides. Okay, so we have a relatively large wave packet that is, explores um, our lattice. And you see this nice coherent dynamics and this dephasing is due to a weak uh, harmonic confinement that is present in our system, which leads to a dephasing of the different wave packets, which explore slightly different regions of the local tate. Now we use this to benchmark all of our experimental parameters. And then we look at the long time dynamics. So this is the imbalance um, that uh, the system stabilizes to after long time. So this is this average value here. Uh, that we extract as a value of the applied tilt. And we measured this for spin down and spin up atoms, which uh, remember see a slightly different value of the tilt. And uh, what you see here is that the steady state value of the imbalance increases as a function of the tilt. It's non-monotonic. Uh, this can, however, be simply explained by the structure of the eigenstates, the Van Stark eigenstates that we can calculate analytically. So this is an important thing to note here if the steady state value of the imbalance is non-zero, it indicates uh, the presence of some localized uh, states. However, if it is equal to zero, we cannot really make um, a statement about if this system is localized or thermal. It may just mean that the local structure um, is, uh, looks or it has a structure that is insensitive to our um, imbalance observable. Okay, so now we can actually calculate the steady state value also analytically. It just follows the simple Bessel form, and uh, the solid lines are just analytic prediction. So this works actually very well for large values of the tilt. For small values of the tilt, we see some deviations, which may be due uh, to the presence of, of the harmonic confinement. So now what happens if we add interactions? Here you see a comparison between the non-interacting dynamics and the interacting one for a Hubbard interaction energy of 5J. The light blue data is the long time dynamics of our spin polarized gas. And the dashed black line is the analytic prediction. So this works uh, extremely well. And then the dark blue data uh, shows you the same trace, same measurement, same system, but now tuning the Hubbard interaction energy to 5J. So qualitatively, it does not look uh, very different. We see again coherent oscillations at short time. Then there's some offset that develops and it seems relatively stable or very stable uh, up to a thousand tunneling times, roughly a thousand tunneling times. And here this gray line shows comparison with ED simulations at, um, at a system size of 16. So at short times, we see a strong finite size effects in this ED simulations, but for long times, this seems to agree very well with our experimental results. Now this modeling in ED also takes into account experimental imperfections. So we wanted to understand if this stable um, steady state value is actually due to our experimental imperfections, such as the harmonic confinement, the small spin dependent tilt that we have. And basically then we performed the same simulations again, just removing all the experimental imperfections that we have in our system. And we see that even in numerics uh, in, of the clean system, this is extremely stable uh, for an interaction energy of 5J. Now for simplicity here, I show um, simulations where we have an ordered um, initial state. So it has the spin ordering similar to a nail state and the charge density wave. 
but it's extremely robust, even if we go to much longer timescales in ED. And uh, this somehow told us that what we are seeing in our experiment, or at least what we are seeing in our experiment in combination with this numerics, is not really uh, what we expect from stack MBL because we don't have any inhomogeneity, any uh, small amount of disorder in the system. So the question is, why is it so robust? And of course, since we have this tunability of the Feschbach resonance in our experiment, we explored a large uh, range of parameters. So we scanned, I, I don't show all of the experimental results here, we scanned the value of the tilt and the value of the interaction energy. And here's a cut um, of this 2D plot at a specific value of the tilt. Uh, it's very, relatively small. It's about three times larger than the tunnel coupling. And um, we scan the interaction energy from minus 20 to plus 20 J. And this is again the steady state value. Uh, so it's after a few hundred tunneling times. And you see that there are no big features in the scan as a function of the interaction energy. So it's zero interactions. We have this one year stark localized system. Uh, this is what we would expect. The same happens at very strong interactions. And then there's a, a, some feature, some drop or dip in between. And as I mentioned before, there are some resonances in this tilted Hubbard model. And specifically, this one corresponds to the resonance where two fermions uh, are separated by two sides. So the energy difference is two times the value of the tilt. And then one fermion can resonantly hop on top of the other one if this um, two times tilt value matches the Hubbard interaction energy. So we expected that it, at these resonances, at least the system would quickly thermalize. However, we find it does not. It still develops a steady state value of the imbalance. And um, we believe that this, these are some remnants of the fragmentation phenomenon that I've explained to you in the beginning, which, however, analytically, we can only show in the limit of very strong tilt. So we need to reach this perturbative regime where delta or the spin or the tilt between neighboring sites is a very large energy scale. However, in our experiments, we are very far from that. So we have a very small value of the tilt. It's three times J. And we can even make it smaller. And still, we observe this very robust steady state value of the imbalance, even for very long evolution times, and down to very low values. And uh, so this is something that, that was puzzling us for a very long time. So we did a lot of numerics and analytical studies in order to understand it. And um, even our postdoc actually developed a, a more efficient classical algorithm in order to study these systems, because uh, for long evolution times, ED um, can only go up to, uh, let's say, 20 sites, and we have about 290 lattice sites in our system. Now, what we have been also starting to, to look at is actually the large tilt limit. So let me uh, give you an idea of where we are in this phase diagram. So, so far we have explored uh, values of the tilt up to 3J, so th this region down here. Um, now, in order to get closer to the perturbative description um, where we know that the Hilbert space fragments into this dynamically disconnected subspaces, we have also worked um, on realizing this large tilt regime. So it's still intermediate, uh, but we went up to values of 8 J uh, for the tilt between neighboring sites in order to see if this regime can already be described by the effective perturbative Hamiltonians that we can derive in the large tilt limit. So um, I give you one example of the experimental results that we have been obtained. And uh, this is in this violet region. So it's over here where delta is the largest energy scale in the system, much larger compared to uh, U and J. I don't give you the analytic Hamiltonian here. It has several different terms, but the most important one uh, for our dynamics is the one uh, where we have correlated tunneling where two fermions hop onto the intermediate site. And just from energetics, energetic considerations, you see that for an initial charge density wave where you have only one fermion on every other site, this process is detuned or off resonant because if two fermions hop onto the intermediate site, they have to pay a Hubbard interaction, energies, uh, interaction energy U. However, if you have doublons in the initial state, this process is resonant. So in order to see uh, how well the description of this analytic Hamiltonian actually works, we compared initial states with different uh, doublon fractions because initial states with doublons should show much faster dynamics as compared to singlon initial states. 
And uh, the amplitude is given here. So this um, amplitude for the correlated tunneling is J square U over delta square. And this is what you see here. So the green curve is um, an initial charge density wave with signals only, and the blue one with a double on fraction of 28%. Now there is faster dynamics, but in order to reveal really the dominance of this correlated tunneling process, we looked at this blue data and the contribution from, from singly occupied sites and doubly occupied sites individually. And this is what you see here. So the blue trace is just a single fraction of our mixed initial state. And indeed, because of this correlated tunneling process and the energetic considerations, the single trace is stuck. And the dynamics in the blue trace really only originates from Dublin assisted tunneling processes, which occur on a time scale shown by the dashed line, which should be given by the amplitude of the correlated tunneling. And indeed, this matches very nicely um, with the 24 tau uh, that we would expect from theory. So this is uh, to see that the effective Hamiltonian works. Effective Hamiltonian is actually the solid line in the, in the calculation. This is ED with the effective Hamiltonian. And um, we do see a very nice agreement with our data. So even for this moderate values of the tilt equal to 8J, uh, we seem to be already in the regime where the effective Hamiltonian describes the dynamics at least up to around 100 tunneling times. Okay, so we can start to ask questions about thermalization in this effective fragmented model. And here I wanted to make just a few comments because we have now the substructure in our symmetry sector. And I told you that initial states live in these different fragments that are shown here. Uh, but now you can ask the question, okay, of course one initial state can only explore one fragment. So can, if you define it within the whole symmetry sector, if you define thermalization within the whole symmetry sector, you would say it's non-ergodic. But uh, what we should really do is study thermalization with respect to one fragment. And there can be also different phenomena. The initial state can, be, uh, can um, show thermal dynamics within the fragment or also localized dynamics within one fragment. And this you see here. So we look at the long time steady state value as a function of the double on fraction in the initial state. First of all, we see it's non-zero, uh, which is expected. It's non-ergodic within the symmetry sector but it does not tell us yet what happens within one fragment. And this is what you see here in the, in this light blue data, um, the prediction of a thermal behavior within the fragment our initial state lives in. Now, because it's a subspace, it does not have to be zero, um, but we also see it does not agree with our data. And there can be several reasons for that. So as I said, um, the, the structure of the states within the fragment uh, can be more complicated. It can be uh, non ergodic by itself. And there have been predictions that there is even scarring um, within fragments. And so this gives us one way to study this rich interplay between the different thermalization phenomena and the weak ergodicity breaking models of these fragmented systems. And eventually what we are planning to do is actually prepare uh, different initial states uh, that are within, live within the same symmetry sector, but different fragments in order to get a closer look at the different thermalization dynamics, take density snapshots of our many body states in order to learn more about how the information actually is distributed as a function of time, um, starting from different initial states. Okay, and with this, I'm at the end of my talk. I would like to thank in particular Sebastian, Thomas and Barat who have been uh, taking all the data in the lab and Pablo and Frank, uh, with whom we have um, spent a lot of time discussing about the different uh, aspects of fragmentation and how these thermalization phenomena show up in our experimental system. So thank you very much. I think it took a little bit more time, so I hope uh, well, we can take at least uh, maybe one or two questions or so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Indeed, we have time for one or two questions at least. Uh, yeah, Jean Philippe. Yes. Uh, uh, do you hear me actually? Or yeah. Yes. Hi. Okay. Thanks. Uh, hi. Uh, very this nice talk. Um, I have two, uh, two questions. First one is perhaps I missed it, but I mean the the, um, the Van Stark ladder is unbounded, right? So if, if the system would thermalize, I mean it should run away all, all, all the way down, right? So, so is there something I missed? Um, 
And my second question, and then you can perhaps take over, is is there any role that's played by Fermi statistics? And, and would bosons uh, uh, have similar behavior? Yeah, so I think bosons should show similar behavior. Um, I'm, there have been a couple of theory works also discussing uh, the tilted bose hubbard model. Uh, we haven't looked at that yet in detail, so I'm not 100% sure if there are like specific differences between these two models, but it should also show this um, emergent fragmentation in some, some regimes. Now, indeed, if the, the Vanier Stark letter thermalizes, like if you, if you think about adding dissipation, for example, it will just run, run down, right? It will just uh, fall off. But now I think the interesting point um, that we have been looking at or trying to understand about thermalization in these um, effective models, because now um, in the non interesting case, it's clear. Okay, we know it's localized. It will not uh, roll down the hill. But now if we in add interactions, this could happen. Okay, we, it can redistribute energy, can dissipate energy. So it could just convert um, interaction energy into kinetic energy and um, move uh, down uh, the steep uh, hill, let's say. Um, we don't see that happening. So this is the stipule moment conservation or center of mass conservation, which uh, you may say, okay, fine. We understand that center of mass conservation, good. But now, uh, even on top of that, there's this additional fragmentation of the many body Hilbert space. So now, even if you look states, at, look at states which have the same dipole moment and the same center of mass, they can show very different uh, relaxation dynamics um, in as a function of time. So this is what we have been interested in, in studying. This is described by these smaller fragments. And now there can be thermalization within one fragment, which does not mean the system rolls down the hill. Here, thermalization just means that all the states within this little fragment are explored um, because it's ergodic within this little fragment. But it does not tell you yet exactly how this uh, steady state would look like. But it still conserves the center of mass. Huh? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, it seems that there are no further questions for this, this talk. So let's thank Monica and all the speakers of the session once more. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this is the end of the session. So um, the next one is in one hour. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.